Good morning, folks. We've got 14 science stories for you today, including some of the most incredible and unambiguously paramount releases we're going to see. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on the sun was mostly quiet, except for the last few hours on the north. Filaments lifted, others collapsed, eyes open for more activity up there. The solar wind peaked intensity at the purple spike and is coming back down now this morning. The plasma speed never cracked 400 kilometers per second, however, and we go from calm to very quiet in the field. Had an interesting earthquake swarm in Iceland. The constant concern here is for magma movement and intrusion to the dangerous volcanoes in the country. We'll start with the sun in terms of papers, as a new method for solar cycle forecasting breaks the recent trend of predicting a similar solar cycle to the one we just had. These scientists are predicting a considerably stronger cycle than the one we just had, and with Earth's magnetic field strength a matter of concern, that's really not what we'd want to see. Let's head out to the Egg Nebula up next, the central star hidden by a dust torus around it, revealing the thin X-beams and concentric waves. They are saying that their models of making this feature are not helping, so what's their answer? Add another star, say it was actually a triple star system. And yet, we only see the evidence of energetic outcasting from a single point. There's only one dust torus, and there are much more electromagnetic explanations for the characteristics of that nebula. We go to Mars for a purpose up next. First, a piece on electric dust storms and their influence on the chlorine cycle of the atmosphere. It's a very good intro to the charged atmosphere of the red planet. They have officially discovered an ozone at Mars, which by the way requires that charged atmosphere, which they are realizing means their methane observations at the red planet are compromised. And the third story at Mars, the MAVEN observations of the Martian magnetotail comport with a different model of magnetic reconnection, and it's pretty much Alphane's that of the thin current sheet. They are showing how nonlinear magnetic fields develop in the thin sheet, and they've always been modeled simply as linear. This is the key problem Alfane mentioned with simplifying magnetic models, and the conclusions of him and of this paper are purely plasma universe. Coming back to the sun, a critical change to the solar proton impact area is needed. The climate models only apply a static, minimal polar impact zone, but in reality, it's highly variable. They tend to overestimate the impact area on Earth and underestimate the concentration of the plasma in the smaller region. And by the way, they also need to be modeling all the low latitude penetration dynamics we've learned about from literally the very same journal this year. And one thing is for sure, they are pushing forward on the particle influence of clouds. The space energy plays a role in both the behavior and even creation of some aerosols. And this is critical because, as website members learned yesterday in the podcast and in a Deeper Look episode this last week, they are saying clouds are the key to the climate. And so we already know what the key to the clouds is. Part of the weather extremification is hitting the cyclones. They are lasting for shorter durations, but with stronger peak wind speeds. Basically, the life cycle of the weather is speeding up. Then again, with an ensemble model within the newest CMIP6 range, they are finding uncertain results for six of the seven oceans in terms of cyclones. That doesn't say much for the newest climate models. In a nod that the sun is always needing more credit for what's happening here, the medium-scale ionospheric disruption waves are some of the most present dynamics in the ionosphere, and we are just learning now, officially, they are indeed controlled by space weather. Folks, I'll say it again, the movie The Day After Tomorrow was absurdly overkill. Too fast, too extreme. But that does not mean the mechanism that triggered the disaster is false. The melting of cold, fresh ice causes rapid cooling and increased storm activity. When the ice is locked at the poles of this planet, we get the warm interglacial temperature. When the polar ice is disrupted, we head back to the ultimately colder eras of Earth. In a piece that's screaming at the global electric circuit, they are shocked to find that their water vapor charge deposition hypothesis is failing for volcanic plume electrification, finding instead humidity is anti-correlated with plume charge, so they're needing a new way to electrify these volcanic plumes. Well, first of all, there should be some small charge component to the smoke given its creation by plasma, but as the plumes rise, they're encountering tremendous differential and in increases in atmospheric electricity. It's simply the global electric circuit, 
now. Let's stick with that because I've given numerous things we need to look for in terms of increased electricity, signifying that space energy has too strongly begun to penetrate into the Earth system with our magnetic field fading. And one of those things was if we were to start to see the lightning records falling in a big way. So what are the records for lightning? Longest distance and longest lasting flash? Well, as of the world waking up yesterday morning, this was the answer. 200 miles long, 7.74 seconds. An insane lasting time for a lightning bolt. But then, this happened yesterday. Count it out if you wish. It's about 11 or 12 seconds, unambiguously shattering the previous world record, and they caught it on camera. But alas, it sits in second place, because while that flash occurred, the World Meteorological Organization officially confirmed the new distance and duration records, 440 miles long, more than double, and 16.7 seconds, more than double the previous record, and about four seconds longer than the one that was caught on film. Folks, to put it as lightly as possible, the lightning records are falling. This was one of my canaries in the coal mine. It was great to see the volcanic plume electrification call, the sun controlling more of the climate as their model uncertainties and errors are revealed. All of that plus the super flare, effect on earthquakes, health and technology, Earth's magnetic reversal, the micronova and the likely next end of the world. It's all in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, third edition. 300 pages, 500 citations, one paradigm shift in thinking. We greatly appreciate your support. You can get our new book at spaceweathernews.com slash publications. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.